Okay, me again. So instead of making like 18,000 slides to talk about this, I'm just doing a short live video. Hopefully I'll try to keep it short. So we're going to talk about the basics of animal care. So if you want a dog, a cat, even a goldfish, you're their voice. They can't speak up and say, hey, quit feeding me this crap. <laughs> you know, they, they can't tell you when they don't feel well or if their food upsets their tummy or if the, the chemicals that you're using to clean your floor are really irritating their paws. So you are their voice. You are responsible for taking the best care of them that you can. Um, they look to you and to us to keep them healthy. And even the Bible charges people. Sorry, it's telling me my battery is low. I know that's why you're plugged in. Come on, little phone. Um, even the Bible charges us to take proper care of our animals. Even oxen got a day of rest in the Bible. So um, there are two things to pay really close attention to regarding your pets. The first is food and the second is environment. So just like with your own body, if you put garbage in, you can expect garbage out. You can expect things to go wrong with your bottom body and your different systems and things like that. Um, animals need high quality food. They need protein. They need fiber. They need vegetables. Cats don't need vegetables, but, but dogs need healthy fiber. Um, they don't need genetically modified grains or wheat fillers or um, meal, bone meal. Um, I'm going to include a picture in the comments of this video that has a list of things to avoid when you're looking for pet food. Huh, buddy? And actually, we just, uh, the food we had been using reformulated and now has corn in it. So I um, asked someone that we trust, um, Chris Webster, if you know Jennifer Webster, who's our our platinum, hopefully soon diamond leader, her husband, Chris, they run a farm. He used to be a manager at Petco. And so I asked him what food they use for their dog. And he said they use Victor. So we will be switching to Victor for this guy because he is, he is worth it. <laughs> um, okay. Another thing is your environment. So the toxins and synthetic things that are in your home that you clean with, all of those affect your pets as well. They're more sensitive to chemicals than we are. So if you mop with a product that's a known toxin, that's a known carcinogen, or it's an endocrine disruptor, it messes with their hormones, um, or it irritates the respiratory system, think about that. Dogs walk with their paws and then they lick their paws or cats lick their fur. They lay down on the floor. They lay down on things that we clean and then clean themselves and ingest whatever residue is left. Um, sorry, my phone's giving me notifications. Um, so we really need to be aware of what we're cleaning our home with and what we're surrounding our pets with. Um, there was a study, Dr. Ann Steinemann from the University of Washington did a study in 2015 and found that there were 156 different VOCs, which are volatile organic compounds, they're not good things, um, even though it's the word organic, uh, emitted from 37 products with an average of 15 VOCs per product. 42 of these VOCs are classified as toxic or hazardous under the U.S. federal laws, and each product emitted at least one of these chemicals. These included genotoxins, bronchoconstrictors, so throat tightening respiratory stuff, neurotoxins, reproductive toxins, hepatotoxins, blood issues, uh, mutagenic chemicals, um, the emissions of carcinogenic hazardous air pollutants, or HAPs, um, from green fragranced products were not significantly different from regular fragranced products. So those fragrances are just a blend of 3,000 chemicals that we have no idea what they are or what they've done to our body, our respiratory system, or those of our pets. So nothing has to be on a label for cleaning or household products. So that's why in our house, we've swapped everything out. Pretty much everything we use is Young Living and we know it's non-toxic for our pets, for us, for my babies. It's, it's important. You know, if you have kids, especially, you don't wanna be exposing them to reproductive toxins and endocrine disruptors from the time they're born. Think about what 30 years of that exposure is going to do. It's not a good sign. I actually just got a notification this morning that the sperm count in uh, in men, who Western men, is declining rapidly, and we don't know why. Um, I think environmental toxins play a huge role in that, as well as GMOs. So um, pet sensitivity, they are so much more sensitive to smell than us. A dog's sense of smell is 10 to 100 
thousand times more sensitive to ours. The part of the brain that interprets smell is also four times larger in dogs than it is in humans. Dogs can now detect bladder cancer just from smelling urine. I mean, that's insane, right? So they don't even need you to open the bottle necessarily for them to actually be able to smell it. So a little goes a long way with your animals. We'll include a dilution chart later. So especially with dogs, when you apply an oil, apply it from the ears back so you don't overload their sensory system. Um, oils, as you know, are emotional as well, and animals have emotions too. So you don't really want to be messing with how sensitive that is up there. Okay, let's get on to three different ways to use oils with your pets.